almost freezing. Beautiful fall morning. Well, good morning, everyone. I was right. It did freeze last night. I guess it got down to about minus three. All my flowers here are frost susceptible or freezing susceptible bulbs. So I need to dig them. So I'm going to dig them and metal detect today. Check the frost out on the grass. It's actually kind of pretty. I don't know if you could see this, but look at all the leaves are just falling. There's no wind out here. They're all just falling off the trees with the heavy frost on them. It's kind of cool. Definitely a different way for leaves to fall off the trees. Okay, so first we're going to start with this row of dahlias right here. I'm going to dig them up. I'm ready for storing. I'm going to find where they dig here. There they are. Uh, my dahlias had a very strange year. All my bulbs were very strange because I had to uh, wait so long before I put them in the ground. It was a very late spring this year. So my Plants didn't even get dug or planted until July, it seemed like. The first week of July is when I'm in the ground. It's very late for this area of the world. Yeah, the plants are coming off the bulbs so easy. Take that. Look at that. Let's see where those bulbs are. one little guy there. A bunch of guys here. Yeah. So I didn't get a lot of bulbs this year because they are planted so late. Alright. Let's get the rest of this done. There you go. That's a better clump. It's a good idea. Just take these, break off the stems, and set them aside to dry out. Any little guys you want to get, they're kind of cool to put in a little pot. Alright, see you when I'm finished. Okay, so my row of uh, dahlias are done. And I'm going to move on to this part of the garden. These are all my gladiolias. That's a nice red gladiolias here. Um, and you can tell they grow a little bit taller, so they're in behind those shorter dahlias. And, uh, yeah. Okay. So, basically what you want to do with these is just get below the bulb. And grab the stalks here. Hopefully they come out. Yeah, there we go. So you've got uh, a couple of little bulbs here. They're not super large. That's okay, they'll grow into a nice flower next year. Just snap them off, like that. Put them in your barrel for drying out. And then a couple. These ones are bigger. This is more like it. You can see there's a nice little bulb there. Just snap it off and put it in the barrel to dry. No worm in there. Get back in the garden. Very good. Okay, so I'm going to work on this area. See you when I'm finished. Okay, so just finished up my uh, my bulbs here. You can see a nice uh, variety here. Uh, different sizes. Uh, some are a little more undeveloped than the others. And some of them look pretty good. I like that one. That's pretty nice. Alright, so I have three here that I didn't uh, take off the stems. Some people uh, say you're supposed to let this dry before you snap it. I don't think it's worth the time to do that. You've got to get it all done. So if you look here, this is a bit of a smaller one. It had a small corm. I guess that's, the, I remember that's the name of the, uh, the bulb on a gladiolia. And snap it off. 
Now that's the next year's growth right there. You can see I'm all bundled up here. It's actually getting pretty warm. It was supposed to be minus three still when I woke up and came out here and started doing the digging. Um, if you notice, all that dirt was pretty wet down there. Um, got all that area cleared up. Now I'm going to metal detect. What do you think I'm going to find? I know I found, when I first got my Technetix uh, detector, I found a nickel in there. I'm going to use a different detector now. Okay, everyone. So this is called a GoFind 20 made by Mine Lab. Um, I bought it as a bit of a backup detector. Um, it also is really great for storing and going on a trip, right? So it's only about, I don't know, not even two feet long when it's folded all up. So I'm going to unfold it for you to see what it looks like, right? So first of all, the, um, uh, the display here has a little lock. There's a little red button that locks it into place. So you unlock it and pop it open. Now it's in place. We have a handle here for your wrist, forearm. And you just push it out. The best way to get it open is to push it out instead of yanking on it and get it set. It has a little handle to grip onto your arm. But I don't like using that at all. I just leave it open. Um, it has a little clasp here to extend the, uh, the coil. And that's about right, right there for me. And of course, bend it out. And the coil is pretty small. Uh, <laughs> it's about 5 by 4 or something like that. Quite a small coil. Anyway, let's get to detecting this garden. Okay, anyway. Uh, this here detector's actually found a couple of cool things. It found an old leather sax. Um, few pennies and things like that, coins. I haven't taken off the cover yet. <laughs> so as you can see, you can see a little display. It actually has four discriminations. You hit that little search button to change the iron on and off. I'm going to put the iron on. Uh, you can change the volume right here. And you can change the depth right here. And I guess that's as deep as it's going to go. Um, the depth indication will come right here and then it'll guess what it is. So if it's a bigger item, bigger money, right here, if it's a penny or a dime, pull tab or a ring, it's gonna be here, foil, and then iron nails right here. So let's give this a try. Oh. Okay, so it's saying something in here. Again, deep. I like that sound right there. You guys see what's happening? Alright, so I'm going to dig that and see what we get. Of course, the soil right here is a little bit muddy. It's wet. But, if you think about it, it's going to get wetter tonight. There's supposed to be a big storm coming. Alright, you can see some of the old pieces from the dahlias are there. Okay, so I'll take the detector and go over that spot that I dug. Alright, looks like there might be something in there. We'll give that a try with my pinpointer. Oh, I actually see it. It's just a nail. Very good. Alright. On to the next. Okay, so here's the results of my garden hunt. I have a twist tie, a nut, a nail, pretty modern nail, bent nail, bent nail, old nail, and this one's quite old, very rusted. Looks like it might have been a square nail. Um, I forgot to mention, if you get one of these, you're definitely going to want to have one of these. Um, I just set my chip, uh, my pin pointer is a bit of a cheap one. Uh, it's a GP pointer, made in China, uh, a bit of a copycat of the Garrett, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, a lot cheaper, and I got that one on Amazon. This one, the GoFind 20, I bought that at the TSC store here in Ontario, and um, it was only uh, $99 on sale. 
Um, I signed up for the Insider Mail email and got a good deal on that. Normally it's $150 at TSC store. Anyway, um, take a look. There's a neat little compartment here that covers up the batteries. It takes four AA batteries to run this machine if you're interested in that detail. Alright, so um, on to gardening. Alright, so my next area here looks a little wild. Uh, this plant is called Tigridia. It's not a very expensive plant, but it's beautiful. And um, they just, uh, the flowers only last one day. So I'm going to clear this area out. And I just dug a few here to show you how it looks. Just take and get them loose like this. Pull them out. There they come. And I have a few here laying down. So all you need to do with these is um, snap them off as well. Just like that. And leave everything on, that's all I do, um, and let them dry. And as soon as they are all dry, same with the other two bulbs, um, the dahlias and the gladiolias, I store them in some peat moss for the winter so they don't completely dry out. If they completely dry out, you won't get anything in them in the spring. There you go. Alright, let me finish that area. Okay, so the Tigretti area is all done. It's a lot of work doing all this. I have all these bulbs. Some of these are pretty nice. That's a nice big one right there. A lot of ones at the front were very small. More like that. Yeah, so a lot of potential for next year's beautiful flowers. Time to store them up. So what I do is let them dry. Um, shake off as much dirt as possible. Make sure that all the worms and things are out. And then I just lay a layer of um, peat moss over this and I put them in my cool basement for the winter um, next up is this big beast right here this is a big dahlia he has uh, dinner plate size flowers and uh, a bit more of an expensive dahlia compared to the other ones anyway time to dig well that was easy um, but take a look at this clump of bulbs here. You can see them all on the bottom. Um, the soil gets pretty compact in around the plant, so I'm going to let this dry out a bit before I try to shake it all off. Um, and really, this is all one plant. Um, came out of a few bulbs. I've had a lot in there for next year. Should be interesting. I could spread them out and have a lot of big plants. Anyhow, um, yeah, I thought I'd show you that before I got on to tearing it apart. Okay then, so look at this massive clump. Isn't that amazing? All those little tubers, bulbs, whatever you like to call them, in there. And the reason why you got to let it dry out a little bit is get all this dirt out. And, of course, there's some of the old rotten tuber there from last year. And uh, so if you store it away with all that in there and it being too wet, the whole thing will just go bad. So you got to be careful. And you can see some of the peat moss is still in there from last year in that big massive clump. I didn't break it up. Sometimes people like to break it up. Sometimes I just like to throw the whole thing in the ground. Let's see what happens. Anyhow, I'm almost done. I'm going to um, dig a little bit more here. I have more of the, the yellow dahlias that I have the smaller ones they make nice rows and then I'm going to detect just a little bit more okay let's do a little bit of a live dig here um, got a nail signal or an iron signal right there and if you look right here it says it's very shallow uh, my sensitivity is way down because it was driving me crazy um, I was digging like crazy in the other garden for nothing so it seems to be right about there. You can see where that little um, piece of grass is right there between my uh, coil. I'm going to aim for that spot. Yay. Alright, my pinpointer's already on. Oh. oh, yeah, it's very close. Right there seems to be the target spot. Let's see what we got. Oh, and there we are. We have a nail. Very good. Okay, so this is kind of cool. 
I had um, a funny sound here. It said uh, like a pull tab or jewelry. And so then when I dug the hole, it was right in this little spot right there. You can see now it's coming up iron, which makes sense because it is a piece of an old uh, clothespin. You can see that. So the shape is giving it that ring pull tab to blow it can feel to the detector. And then when it got closer, it became that iron signal. Anyway, I really like the Go Find. I think it's a, a neat little tool. Uh, the small size of the coil makes it pretty interesting. Um, we're not really sure about getting the accuracy, accurate uh, hole location. There's no pinpointer on it. So I dug a big hole for this one, and thankfully I got it out. Um, but anyway, um, you definitely need a pinpointer to make it go a lot easier for you. Otherwise, you'd be splitting your plug in half and then in half again. You'd be making a whole mess of that whole area. All right, so um, that's it for today. Well, good morning, everyone. Here I am. I'm um, going to pack away. My bulbs are out in the garage drying out. I wanted to show you these little tracks in the snow. Uh, we're on the edge of winter here in Ontario. We've had a bit of snow this week, but uh, hanging around zero degrees. Today it's probably about one degrees. Um, here's the area I dug up last week. All my bulbs are done. And look what I missed. There's a bunch of bulbs right there. Some dahlias. Very good. Anyway, it's good to remember. So today I'm going to pack away my bulbs. See you in a bit. Well, I've got started. I dumped out my uh, tray of dahlia bulbs here first. I'm going to put dahlias on the bottom of my stack in the basement. Um, I like to use these old uh, uh, they're air vents for the roof of a house, but uh, they're about the wrong size. Never got a chance to return them, so I'm using them as my um, storage trays. And the neat thing is, I like them because they have uh, good vents here that let the air come up through. Um, another thing is, uh, if I put the bottom one without something in it, a lot of peat moss will just fall through and will get wasted. So anyway, I'm breaking off uh, as much dirt as possible. Let's give it a little tap here on the floor, put it in a nice layer in the tray. Very good. So, see you in the next one, next tray anyway. So my first tray is all cleaned off. If you notice, I don't, I'm not too particular. Don't really care if there's a little bit of leftover dirt in the, in the balls. Um, this is the one that was on top of the, the, uh, the, uh, the dug up patch. And uh, it's actually a little bit cleaner. Some people would suggest I spray these all down, wash them. I just figure that's a lot of waste of water. And uh, why bother getting out more water than you need? I could have left them out to let the rain do it, but uh, then that defeats the purpose of getting them dried and sealed up. So you want these tubers to have a nice dry skin, so then they're protected and won't rot in the basement. Um, so anyways, this one shouldn't be a problem. I think it's going to be good. Um, so now I'm going to take some peat moss. I just bought this little bag of, or a bale of peat moss here, and I'm just going to layer it all over with some peat moss. So they pack the peat moss into these bales really tight, and to break it up, you can see a little clump. So anyways, I'm going to do that next, get that all done. Here's a couple of things just to keep in mind when you're cleaning out uh, your root balls. Um, if you find like an old dead one, it's probably going to rot and become really moist. Um, yeah, it's best to just take and break that off. And look what I got in one of them. A little old worm. Oh, well, young worm, I should say. He needs to get in the ground so he can be safe for the winter. How'd you go? Um, another thing, I like to use a little uh, screw or something like that just to get in between some of the more difficult spots if I think there's something wet in there, it actually reveals it like this was. So, um, good idea to keep it as dry as possible. Well, next tray up is the Tigridias. These won't take too much to do. Um, I do <laughs> keep a little package that has the name of those things on it. If you're ever looking for them, there they are. They're beautiful. You can see a picture of the flowers. Um, yeah, and I get all those colors. And 
they bloom for one day and in about two more days another bloom comes and lasts for the day. It's a pretty cool unique little um, I guess summer bulb. Anyway, now to store them. They're a lot easier to clean off. Basically I just took and threw them up in the air, let the dirt kind of jumble off them. You'll probably see a little bit of a dirt pile there in the bottom where I've been throwing them around. And I don't really care too much if every single one of them survive. I have a lot of them. I started with like a dozen. And uh, every year they just keep growing, keep coming back. Initial investments multiplying. Very good. Into the tray you go. I don't care about all those little uh, roots that hang off the bottom. They basically dry up and don't cause a problem for rotting. And I don't really care about the old bulb at all either. I don't need to clean them up perfect. Just make sure they are in a state where they'll be nice and dry. And yet not dry out completely. Very good. Okay, so now I'm going to store my gladiolias. I just wanted to show you um, the different stages. Here's a bulb or corm of uh, a gladiolia. So I don't take off anything. Like this here old, old one, there's one from like um, two years ago sitting here. It's not rotten or anything. It's not going to even get uh, wet. It's just going to be a dried on piece of root. And then all the skin here is from last year's corm, and there it is still. And this is the new one that formed. And sometimes you get uh, two or three in here. This one just has one. Um, anyway, I just leave it all. I, I don't care um, about the old stuff with gladiolias. They just kind of dry out, and they give a little bit of energy again to the new corm. Um, and again, the new plant is inside here, and it will grow from that. Um, so uh, I just kind of knock off all the dirt and throw it in the tray. In they go. When I was a kid, my grandpa used to say, I've got to clean all that off, all that old skin and stuff. And look, yeah, see that? That old corn popped off by itself, no problem. The second one is still there, and the new corn is there. And uh, I just find it's a waste of time to do all that work. Uh, just knock off the dirt, get them into the state. If you see anything that's rotten on them, uh, yeah, throw that away because it'll wreck the whole batch. And uh, again, I planted these so late this year, some of the corns barely developed. Now that'll grow a flower next year. Yeah, there's one that popped off. All right, let me finish my job. So this is one uh, where the corm, the old corms are rotten, the new corms not. And you can see I squeezed it. Yeah, that's kind of all gone bad. So you want to get that stuff out of there because it's going to spoil the whole batch. And um, just take the new corn, throw it in the pile, put some peat moss around it, it'll be great. But again, don't work too hard on it. <laughs> just make sure they're nice and dry. There's the one that's got a bit of a rotten core. Take it off. Throw it in the bin. Very good. All right, let me finish my work. <laughs> again, another one. Yep. Hey, so, so the last one to store is my very big dahlia. Uh, this one gets like two, three feet tall, great big dinner plate sized um, flowers on it. And uh, I just want to knock off all the old dirt and put it right back in this pot and put some peat mass around it. Um, yeah, it's still a little wet here. Not completely dry, but anyway, I don't have too much time to wait. I'm pretty sure it's going to get cold very quick here in Ontario. It is November already, after all. Winter is going to come fast. You can see there's a little worm in there, too. Need to get that out. Alright, out you go. Uh, you can see there's a little bit of old one right here. It's pretty wet. I don't want to take that out too, but I'm going to hold on. I'll probably just break off what I can and um, hope for the breath best there, I think. Again, the peat moss is going to help dry that out, 
keep it from spreading and rotting in the whole clump. Um, I think the important part here is keep it dry, but not dry out completely. Very good. All right, let me finish my work here. Well, all I could say about a bulb like this, don't be afraid to get dirty. Um, I reached in and cleaned that right out with my finger. It's still a little bit moist there. Um, actually, this one right here looked like a good solid tuber until I squeezed it and just popped. <laughs> it made a bit of a mess. Anyway, I got, I think, most of those off. I kind of checked them all around before I put it in here. And you can see the refuse I scooped out my fingers made it a little mucky but that's okay i don't care i can always wash my hands uh, i just don't want the big beautiful flower to rot um i can imagine the value of one of these clumps is quite high i know uh, you can probably find them at yard sales and stuff by other people who store them but uh to buy this right from um like Holland Bulbs or another company like that, it'd probably be up to $20. It's a beautiful plant. Anyway, it's worth keeping. Um, anyway, I'm almost finished. Here's my stack of trays. Uh, I have no rhyme or reason to the order. I just happen to put the dahlias on first and then the tigridias and then the um, on top was the gladiolias. Um, sometimes I like to put the smaller ones down lower because it's a bit cooler. Uh, I don't think it really matters too much, especially when they're in these tra trays and packs so nice. Um, yeah, so I'm going to put some peat moss in there and probably put it on top too or beside the others when I get them stored in the basement. Um, well, thank you for taking a break with me on this chilly November Saturday. I think it's time for me to get back to life. See you later.